Hi, I'm Susan Davis. The Lord gives me many words and visions to share with the people about his soon coming and being ready for the next life. I have a message from the Lord that is important enough to make a YouTube for it. And I want to read it because I don't want to miss any words. My son and I both received powerful and significant visions, and I need to share what the Lord has revealed to us. I will talk about my son's vision first. My son Ethan, at age 14, had a very compelling vision. Ethan's vision was unique in that it could be called up at will, unlike most visions that people have that are fleeting, that they come and go quickly. The vision my son had was one he could bring up in his mind whenever he wanted to. Uh, the vision that Ethan could bring up at will was of Christ's face when he was on the cross. And as a 14-year-old, Ethan drew the Lord's face to the best of his talent. And the picture was as shocking as Ethan's description of his vision. This information that came to a 14-year-old was incredible and eye-opening. And at the time of his vision, I believe I was stunned for about a week or longer at the revelation that was given to my young son. Ethan did not see a pristine face of Christ on the cross, as often is depicted in pictures. What he saw was a bloody and brutalized face. And this is how Ethan had described it. It was an eye-opener for us. And at age 14, he had a shocking vision of what Jesus revealed to Ethan, the true brutality of his face at the time of his crucifixion. I was so shocked at this description uh, my son had given. He said that the horrendous beating that Jesus took, his hair was ripped off his scalp, he saw a beard ripped off his face, scourge marks, um, his ears and nose ripped, and his lips partially ripped off. And so many images men have created show Christ's face as barely scratched. My son's vision was unique in that he could recall this vision at will. And Jesus requested that Ethan draw what he saw. And, and this is what Ethan did. Now let's fast forward from this event to the recent findings of a team of researchers who took the famed Shroud of Turin, the supposed burial cloth of Christ. Forensic studies have demonstrated that the cloth lines up with all the same wounds as described in the Bible of Christ. And the Shroud of Turin also has been found to have human blood and was not uh, a fake. The scientific team also remained perplexed at how the image was put on the shroud. They say it was some sort of supernatural event, something like a powerful flash of energy that imprinted the image onto the cloth, something like the resurrection of Christ, but certainly nothing so far can be explained by science. The study of the shroud also turned up more significant evidence that lines up with what my son saw in the vision of Christ's face on the shroud. I was very interested in what was being revealed in the research of the Shroud of Turin, and it lined up with the graphic image of my son's vision of Christ's face. Here are some of the staggering findings about the shroud, the burial cloth with all the same identifying marks as described of Christ in the Bible. The shroud said in its uh, markings, that there was a tremendous amount of blood that flowed from the head. There was blood all over the shroud, and the individual was severely scourged. The shroud researcher said the person was beaten, tortured, scourged, and that the man of the shroud suffered unbelievably. The body was covered with scourge marks, and there were approximately 120 Roman flag and scourge marks on the body. One of the researchers said in an interview regarding the making of the 3D image of the shroud that he was overcome at the amount of blood he had to remove from the computer image to get to the face to create the 3D image. 
These findings are consistent with the incredible vision my son had. My son saw a face with scourge marks across it also, consistent with many of the scourge marks found on the body of the Shroud of Turin. But there is much more to this report. Along with the Shroud of Turin was something called the Sudarium of Oviedo, a face cloth placed over the face of Christ before the shroud was placed over the dead body, capturing the bloody image. The sudarium was on his face and even used to wipe blood off from the face. The sudarium is a perfect match with the shroud, but it is more like a bloody cloth than the shroud with an actual facial image. Also, the fact that the sudarium, like the shroud, merely a bloody cloth, was saved for hundreds of years is also a huge sign of their authenticity, as it has no artistic or monetary value at all. And there is much more to be told about the sudarium face cloth of Christ. The cloth was not wrapped entirely around the head because the right cheek was almost touching the right shoulder. This suggests that the sudarium was put into place while the body was still on the cross. The second stain was made about an hour later when the body was taken down. The third stain was made when the body was lifted from the ground about 45 minutes later. The body was lying at the foot of the cross for about 45 minutes before uh, being buried. There are smaller blood stains at the side of the main group. It would appear that the sudarium was pinned to the back of the dead man's head and that these spots of blood were from sharp objects, which would logically be the thorns that caused this type of injury all over Jesus' head. A Dr. Alan Wanger applied the polarized image overlay technique to the sudarium, comparing it to the image and blood stains on the shroud. The frontal stains on the sudarium show actually 70 points of contact coincidence with the shroud, and the rear side shows 50 points of coincidence with the shroud. The only possible conclusion is that the sudarium cloth covered the same face as the shroud of Turin. Both the sudarium cloth and the shroud have identical blood types as well. Jewish tradition demands that if the face of a dead person was in any way disfigured, it would be covered with a cloth to avoid people seeing the unpleasant sight. This would certainly have been the case with Jesus, whose face was covered in blood from the injuries produced by the crown of thorns and swollen from falling and being struck. However, it should be pointed out that the information the cloth contributes to understanding the death of the man whose head it covered is awful and shocking. The picture of a corpse hanging on a cross with blood coming out of its nose and mouth must have been truly horrible. The sudarium cloth shows that all the area touched was completely covered in blood before blood came out of a dead body. From the forensic point of view, it is clear that the Shroud of Turin wrapped the dead body of a man who had been whipped, crowned with thorns, and crucified. The Sudarium wrapped the head of a body whose death is perfectly compatible with crucifixion and the wounds inflicted before death visible on the Shroud of Turin. The Sudarium wrapped all the head of the corpse and touched the shoulders slightly and the back slightly. Researchers said many times the sudarium cloth covered the head of a dead body that had died in conditions to totally compatible with those of a crucifixion. The man had been previously wounded to such an extent as to have his hair, top of the back, and the parts of the chest and neck that the sudarium touched covered completely with blood. The bloody evidence left on the Shroud of Turin and the accompanying sudarium face cloth lines up with my son's vision of Christ, beaten until he was completely unrecognizable. The Shroud of Turin researchers who used high-tech 3D imaging created what proposed image of the man of the Shroud of Turin looked like in, in the 3D image, even before the brutal death. Now I want to share the vision I had that ties into this report and prompted me to make this YouTube.
One day, I was at a friend's house, and I was not thinking about any of these topics at all. My friend had excused herself to go upstairs, and no one else was home. I was left to sit on the chair in her living room. Suddenly, without warning, the Lord spoke to me and told me to get down on the floor and to lay prostrate, to which I obeyed. He then told me he was going to show me what he looked like. At this word, my thoughts immediately went to the thought, what will I see? Then, in a vision, I saw Christ standing upright by a door of some kind with his back to me, and in a moment I saw him turn toward me so that I would see his face, and then this vision ended. My immediate thought at seeing Christ was this, it is the guy in the Shroud of Turin, 3D image, the one in, in the same uh, that was done by the 3D image of that Shroud of Turin. I saw that same person portrayed in scientific research of the shroud and the Sudarium face cloth research. It was the one and the same person. And as I have outlined in this report, by the evidence shown by my son's vision, the description in the Bible, the scientific findings of the Shroud of Turin and the Sudarium face cloth, along with the confirming vision that I had, that in my mind Christ was beaten beyond reason and beyond recognition. Let's look at the scripture to what it says about the condition of Christ on the cloth, on the cross. In Psalm 22, 6, it says, But I am a worm, and no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. And then if we turn to Isaiah 52, 14, it says, As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. And this is the point I wanted to make in this message, is that Christ suffered immeasurably more than most of the images of him depict. If we saw Christ portrayed on the cross as he actually was, it would be too hard to see. It would be of a man beaten beyond recognition unidentifiable as a human. He would appear, as the scripture says, marred more than any man, a worm. This was the price paid. These were the conditions met for our sin fines. God himself paid the price. God, who was perfect, God divine, came from a place of perfection and stepped into an event of true horror to recover lost sinners. Will you surrender your all back to him, or will you reject this high price? If you reject this price paid for your sin, you will be rejected. Think twice about this decision. Turn to Christ today before it's too late.